From Norfolk in the east to Hereford in the west, from Sussex in the south to Northumberland in the north. It is said a squirrel can leap from bough to bough, oak tree to oak tree, without ever once touching earth. So great is the great greenwood of England. At the mercy of this sheriff, he'll nowhere be in sight. They'll be all right. They won't. But well, that rich abbot won't be back. Oh. That's for sure. Demanding rent from them. Yeah, the soldiers will though. Well, all those children, women, old folk, defenceless before Norman swords. And we shall defend them, Will. Oh. Robin Hood and his merry men. If that abbot had raised their rents any higher, they'd have starved by Christmas. Oh, you know all about starving, Tuck. Hmm? Will. Robin. What's the matter? Oh, it's... oh tell me. <laughs> well, it's just out here in the greenwood. I miss my kids. My wife. I need to go into Nottingham to see them. What? The danger? I know. But I long for their voices. Their warmth. You want to go? Well, I've got it all worked out. I slip in at twilight, stay just one night, return here first thing tomorrow. You're right. Well, A man should see his family. Go on, Will. Go. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Will Scarlet leaves the protection of his greenwood. As the last rays of sunlight catch the city walls, slips through the gates, hood over eyes, just as they close. <laughs> Flits down back streets, up gloomy passageways until... Well, Alice, let me in. Come on. Well, Alice. He's dead, he's dead. Oh, Tom, Alice. Ben. Oh, Liza. Oh, my little Liza. What? Have you got any presents for us? Family things. What are you doing here? No one saw you come in. No, no, well, what? I kept dreaming of you and the children, so, so I came. Well... Oh. All asleep? Yeah. I'll put on some logs. I've done it. See? A lovely warm fire. Mm. Come sit by me. Oh. <sighs> I've missed you. Have you missed me? Here, all alone. Sheriff's men harrying you every day. I think of you out there in the greenwood. I think you're being caught. Shh, not tonight. Let's just be together. With Tom and Liza asleep in their beds. <laughs> I tell you, I want to speak to the sheriff. Not a chance, old woman. I saw him. Who? Just opened the door a second, slipped into the house, but I saw his face reflected in the firelight. Who's that ugly old hag, Wormley? Your mother? <laughs> a person of no importance, your lordship. Will Scarlet! I saw Will Scarlet! What? Robin Hood's friend! A notorious outlaw! Slipping into his house, here in Nottingham, stealing time with his wife. We have him! Wormley. Sheriff? All men at arms, all constables and catchpoles assemble here immediately. Come! My lord! Me! What about my reward? Who's that? Open up, Will Scarlet! Open up in the name of the sheriff! Trouble. What's going on? Are you going to open this door? We know you're in there! The street's filled with soldiers. Pikemen. See the sheriff. <sighs> He's there. We all his henchmen. Right. Get the children under cover. I'm going to a bite of my longbow from the window. And anyone coming through the front door, I'll welcome with his poleaxe. What a fine target the sheriff makes. My sleek arrow shall nestle its way right into his great chest. Ah! He shoots me! In the breast! What he doesn't know is I'm wearing two breastplates under my jerkin. Perfectly lovely. His arrow splintered in three. But he must be punished. Men! 
Yes, uh, sir. Put your torches to his thatch. Yes, Burn this dirty outlaw. Burn him and his wife and children to ashes. They're burning us down, Will. They mean to kill us. Quiet, Tom. Quiet, Liza. Alice, the back window. Get a blanket. Liza, Tom, that's it. Through the window. Charge, Tom. Don't argue. That's it. Hold on tight. Uh, Will, you're not coming. I stay and fight. Give you time to get away. Go to the Greenwood. Find Robin. Why don't you come? I stay and defend my home. Goodbye. Will shot so wondrous well that foes fell down like corn. He shot and shot until his quiver hung empty. Then he took his sword in his hand, threw open the door, and burst upon his enemies, hacking and smiting, cutting them down, until at last, in desperation, they gathered doors and shutters, and holding them before them, rushed at him, knocking him flying to the ground, piling on top of him, squashing him helpless. Get up, one by one, and Wormley, you have a knife at his throat when he is uncovered. Hold a torch to his face. Will Scarlet, notorious outlaw, companion of Robin Hood. Sheriff of Nottingham, coward, thief, traitor to King Richard. Your neck will be stretched immediately. Wormley. My lord. A new pair of gallows. Build them in the marketplace. We'll hang him before sunset tomorrow. Ah, and, once. and close every gate into Nottingham. No one is to come in or out, understood, until the last breath has left our friend's lungs forever. They, they got him. They what? Will Scarlet. Sweet Jesus. I knew it. What are we going to do, Robin? Blow your horn, Tuck. Blow till your eyes fall out. <laughs> Summon the outlaws. The sure old gates. Nose allowed into. Till after the hanging. There must be a way. I must be able to think of a way. Adam. Alan and Dale, stay here, out of sight, while Tuck and I ride up to the gate. Hi, Robin. Don't come till we signal. Of course. Tuck, you've got that roll of parchment. Here, Robin. Then let us go. You think this will work, Robin? It has to. This old parchment I used to wrap my pastures in with some sealing wax splashed on it. <laughs> I doubt if the gatekeeper had much schooling. Open the gates! Open the gates! A message from His Majesty! Open up! Open up! I am a messenger of His Majesty King Richard bearing vital messages for the Lord High Sheriff of Nottingham! Who's that? Who's making all that knocking at my gate? Open in the name of the king! Two messengers hot with most urgent dispatches from his majesty. No one's coming in here. That's orders. Most definite orders. Open your eyes and look! The royal seal of England upon this document. Oh, oh my goodness. Open these gates! Immediately! Oh, goodness. Oh, dear. I suppose I'd better. But you're the only ones... Not one bastard else. Oh, thank you, gatekeeper. I'll have your keys, kind sir. Lock him in his own dungeon, Tuck, while I summon the others. Right, come on. We're in, but Christ who harrows hell knows how we'll get out. Trust hand and foot, a rope round your neck. How does it feel, Will? I'd rather die a free Saxon than live a Norman slave. Oh. <laughs> political, eh? Let's see how political you feel when all you have beneath your toes is six feet of air. Yeah. Yeah. Wagoner, get your horses ready. At my signal, drive them away. Yes, my lord. See, Will, I hold up my arm. All I have to do is lower it and... Get on with it, Sheriff. If you insist. <laughs> Sudden a summer lightning, an arrow pierced the sheriff's sleeve, pinioning his arm to the gallows wood. A second sliced the rope from which Will was to have hung, 
Robin! As from the four corners of the market, scores of men in Lincoln Green boiled out, shooting their arrows, hacking with their swords. Robin, who are his outlaws? Attack men, attack them! Within seconds, the marketplace was a seething cauldron of fighting bodies. Friar Tuck smote back and forth with his mighty axe. He spit with you. Many fell. Red blood ran like rain down the streets. But gradually, the greater numbers of the sheriff's men pressed in upon the outlaws, who started yielding ground. They're trapped! Every gate is locked! But that's where he was wrong. Suddenly, the outlaws broke, ran backwards. Follow them! Kill the cowards! The gates opened like magic before them and shut behind as they ran out of the city. Your keys, Sheriff! Your keys! You're welcome to them back! Catch! <laughs> Come, my merry men! First, we will bend our knee in thanks to the sweet Lord Jesus. Then now to the land we rejoice with thy sweet son grant us mercy. And in the greenwood, they found Will's wife and children. So their thanksgiving and psalm singing was all the louder. April in the greenwood. Under the earth, slugs, snails, woodlice, restless. Under the trees, amid dead leaves, wood violets, primroses stirring. And up from the ground, growing limb on limb, boughs spreading, ivy winding, the mighty oak. In the high branches, willow warblers, tits and wrens, pine martins and squirrels, a whole hot little universe. Leaves in bud, chicks in egg, cubs in earth, before all catches a flame in the blaze of spring. It was on such a day, in a clearing deep in the forest, a fallen tree uses a footbridge across a stream that I first met Robin Hood. And where her mouth should have been, there was set her eye. And her other eye was stuck fast in her forehead. This is your wife you describe him to. Oh, we friars aren't allowed wives, will we? I believe you, Tuck. Thank you, Robin. Now, as I was saying, this fair me... Oh. Look. What? Coming towards the bridge on the other side. My God, it's huge. Is it a man or a tree? Looks like it can have rocks nesting in its hair. Well, I'm going to cross the bridge. Robin, oh, I think it would be best to let it cross first. Like a great elm. I'm as free a man as any. Oh. I have as much right as anyone to cross this bridge. Oh, dear. Saints preserve him. Good morning. And what a lovely morning it is. You hear that throstle sing? All the forest alive with green shoots and singing birds. <clears throat> Perhaps you'd let me pass. Step back to your side of the bridge so I can get past. I was first on this bridge. I'm waiting for you to get off. I do not get off a bridge for anyone in the whole of the greenwood, least of all. A stranger. <laughs> then you'll get wet. Me? Get wet? Unless you grow wings and fly. See this bow? It's made of the finest yew in Christendom. And it shall seek your hard blood. Oh, that's hardly fair. Fair? I don't have a bow. I do have a quarterstaff, though. A quarterstaff? You could cut one out of that hazel coppice over there. But... Oh, don't worry. I won't go anywhere while you cut it. Robin, don't fight him. Look at him. An oak tree. It's funny. But underneath it all, there's a real gentleness in him. Well, here goes. Robin, don't do. Always do. Always taste, always joust, always find. 
That is what sweet Lord Jesus put us on earth to do. Right. You're not going to get out of my way? I'm about my lawful business. Flanks of ash, legs of elm, crown of oak. But I've your master! He fought well, with great spirit, verve. But it was never a fight between equals. I let it continue so long, then decided it must end. Should I crack him on the nonce? No. Just a gentle sweep over the edge. And into the... What are you two laughing at? Oh, sorry about this. Sorry. <laughs> well, Sir Oak Tree, it seems brute force has its way. You may go on yours. Thank you, sir. But first, perhaps you could help me. Well? I came to Sherwood to find one I hear fights to right wrongs. Defend poor Saxon peasants against haughty Norman lords. Perhaps you can help me. I'm looking for Robin Hood. <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Maybe your brains are happening. I am Robin Hood. <laughs> Entering the most secret place in the whole forest, John. The outlaw's hideaway. Great oak trees. Grassy banks. Hidden behind the deepest bogs and fens. Unassailable. <laughs> no wonder the sheriff can never find it. What I want to do among these glades and sunny banks is create a place, a haven, where ordinary people might be themselves, have dignity... Old people, youngsters, families, feel secure, unthreatened. That's a rare enough thing in England nowadays. Uh, indeed it is. It's a belief I have, a desire, that one day all England might be like this. Sharing, helping, laughing. This is what I've always dreamed of, Robin. You are very welcome into our band, John Little. Look. Who comes here? Who is she? Don't you know? Maid Marian? Moving towards us, drawing from each tree and flower and herb its essence, lips red as holly berries, green robe, a mantle of every leaf and moss and lichen in the forest, her face white and flawless as lilies in a pond. Takes your breath away. She does. My lord Robin. My lady Marian. And who is your companion? Lady Marian, John Little. I am most pleased to meet you, Little John. <laughs> lady Marian. Then, as suddenly as she had come, she vanished leaving under the leaves, boughs and branches. All was sunlight, shadow and eternal greenery. What's that? The hunting horn. Quarry's been spotted. I hope it's a fox. A red, red fox. Or perhaps a deer. A red, red deer with antlers thick as maiden hair. Come on, Robbie. I'll come. But my quarry won't be your quarry. We were off. Old men drop their sticks, fishwives their arguments, children their games. Into the deep forest, a hundred, two hundred of us, blundering, crashing, and all the time ahead of us. Mantle of antlers on high, ran the heart. I know you're here, somewhere. Marion. Marion. Among the greenery, show yourself. Suddenly, up ahead on the brow of a hill, she rested, Wait, turned her magnificent head, and looked back on us. And most beautiful, most strange of all, she was all of purest white. You're here. 
I know it. I saw you, hair flaming red and gold, skin white as milk. That wasn't me. That was the sunlight between the branches. I saw your eyes, chestnut, shining like water in a barrel. Chestnuts? Barrel? You're somewhere, Marion. All the spring forests clad in your green. But where's the blood, Robin? The blood... On your lips. On your lips. Come on, Fartuck! I am coming! In my way! Your sweat's running faster than you! And my heart is running faster than both of us! See! There she is! Stopped in the clearing! I am every fox ever hunted the country to feed its cubs. Every buzzard sweeping blue skies for game. Every pike gliding the depths for perch. I am each cuckoo in its nest. Each fawn suckling its mother's teat. Every snake gorging a mouse. A weasel on a rabbit's back. Dolphin on a winter wave. Sea and sky. Foam and rain. Mountain and river. Earth and fire! What can this be? Spring in the green wood. At bay, the noble heart, flanks heaving, sweat pouring from her. Send your arrow straight into her heart's blood. And red blood on white, white skin. Go on, John, do it. I can't. What? Why not? It's dinner. It's too sacred. Speed and mercy. All done within nature. The mighty Robin Hood, lying white and defenceless on the ground before us. <laughs> Not a stitch of clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wake him, wake him from his pleasant dreams. Robin. Robin. Sleeping on your bed of Speedwell and Columbine. Wake. What? Ah, he awakes. Marion? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. What is this? Not the soft arms and gentle smiles of Maid Marion. This is a blade of hard, cold steel. Bring up those chains of iron. Here, my lord. You're my prisoner, Robin Hood. I'm taking you to the deepest dungeon in Nottingham Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you leave him? I never thought he'd come to harm. They'll try the strapado on him. The wheel, the rack. Oh. Keep quiet, Tom. We've got to get him out. But how? Think. There must be a way. He's not going to break the Saxon scum. 72 hours on the rack, Lord High Sheriff. I could always try boiling oil. No. Robin Hood must be broken in other ways. I have it. My lord? A double trap that will break him and ensnare his outlaws. We chain him in that garret in the North Tower, starve him. At the same time, we announce to the world where he is, what we're doing to him. That will bring every outlaw from here to Carlisle to his rescue. And as they come, we pick them off one by one. And when he is too feeble to know what he does, we get him to tell us the location of his hideaway. Brilliant, Lord Sheriff. Quite brilliant. Here you are, 
you are, Hood. Your new quarters. Thank you, friend. Don't thank me, friend. I go out, I lock this door, and after that time it's not opened again. No food, no water enters here, till you are dead. This is where you will die. <laughs> across the floor. Look out through the grim bars. The greenwood. So near. So far. And beneath me, on every battlement, in every tower, soldiers. I hope to God no one is fool enough to try to save me. We'll have to try a frontal assault. <laughs> no chance. They'd cut us to pieces. Than now. No sense in trying to be king's messengers again. They'll be ready for that. That hole at Nottingham will be a trap. We hide in wagons of hay. Oh, 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 That'll be the first thing they suspect. They'll be trick going. Yeah, all right. Everyone thinking. Mm -hmm. Any secret ways in, anything. We'll meet here again tomorrow. He's very weak. The great Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest. Crawling around like a worm. Four days now without bread or water. Any sign of his accomplices? None, Lord Sheriff. You're certain of that? Absolutely. They're coming. I know it. They're coming. We've got to act now. But how? John's had an idea. No one can get in or out on the ground and we can't tunnel. That leaves only one way. Oh. Through the air. Oh, through the air? <laughs> Flap like a goose, you mean? What are you two on about? It's our last chance. John here, the mightiest bowman in the Greenwood. Under Robin. Shoots this arrow one whole mile. One whole mile? Over the entire city of Nottingham. Over the castle ramparts, over the courtyard, up to the top of the North Tower. And through that one single barred window where Robin is imprisoned. You can make that shot, John. I'll try. <laughs> you do it, and it should be the greatest shot in all Christendom. Oh. But what is the good of it? Even if he does make it, oh. what's it give Robin apart from a spent arrow? Here is the cunning. To the end of the arrow, we attach this long, long thread. Yes. And to the end of this thread, we tie this long... Long cord. Right. And to the end of this cord... We tie this long, long rope. And this wine and chicken is to give Robin strength. To climb back down the rope. Having hacked the bars away with this spike. The shot should be now, in the evening, so he can escape after dark. Oh, oh thy holy Jesus who died on the cross. What a plan. It all rests on whether I can do it. I'll say 10,000 paternosters if you do. Will, get the rest of the men. They might be fighting yet. Well, I take the shot. Good luck. Aye. Right. This is it. I pick up the bow. Stiff, massive in my hand. Test the air for wind. Slightly from the east. Pick up the special arrow. Steady, John. Steady. Place the arrow upon the bow. Then start to draw back. Draw back. My whole body like the heartwood of a mighty oak. All is quiet. All is still. Ah! It flies. Over the walls. Over the down. Over keep and courtyard. Right up to the tower. Between the bar and the bar. It will. It won't. It, it has. has. Uh, an arrow. Am I dreaming? I am so thirsty. It is an arrow. Don't pass out. Uh, a note. A string. 
pull this gently. <laughs> well, no harm done, I suppose. I pull the thread through the window slowly, realizing what it might mean. Then I pull the cord after it. The rope arrives with some food and an iron spike. I never tasted meat so good or wine so sweet. I hack my way out of my chains through the two bars, tying the rope to the steel ring to which my chains had been fixed. The food, the wine, has given me some strength, cleared my senses, enough for me to realize I undertake the most dangerous escapade of my life. Outside, the darkness of night, I struggle through the window. My legs dangle down into black mountains. I loop them over the rope, start slowly off, inching my way. Oh, I hear movement below. The rattle of armor. There. Two soldiers looking hard over the castle walls for enemies. <laughs> Never once thinking to look up above. Inch by inch, I travel on. Look down. A bustle. I see a woman turn, open a door, and within, children round the table. A warm fire. I could enjoy a dinner. Keep your mind on your job, idiot. Keep on, one foot over the other, one hand over the other. Keep going. Ooh, you have blisters. Good. The pain shall not let you forget your task. He's scarcely conscious, my lord. Then he should be ready to speak. I'll use this knife to gouge if he doesn't want to. Open the door. Where is he? Gone. A rope. Quick, cut it! I don't know where I am. All is blackness. My hands and legs are great howling flames of red... What was that? The rope flailed. Keep going. <laughs> it frays. Where's? Hello, Robin. John. Where am I? I saw you a hundred yards back. I'm with the stars. Followed you along underneath. And at last you fell. <laughs> but you were only ten feet above the ground. You fell into my arms. <laughs> Robin! Oh, Aurel. You're safe. Yes, yes, I am. The Normans! The Normans huh? are coming! Oh. Oh. You've got the horses here. Yes. Then let's get on them. No delay. On them and away! All that night we galloped through the great greenwood. But all the time, just behind us, the sheriff and his men. An angry sheriff, robbed of his prize. At first light we came to an enormous glade, oaks and beeches towering, spreading over us like a cathedral. And Robin saw we must stop, Out! turn and face our foe. Dismount! Lead away the horses! As foot soldiers, let us prepare ourselves for battle! So did the sheriff and all his men. As the sun came across the horizon, we fell upon each other. Hungry as wolves, the woods cracking to our combat. Hardier men of heart nor you were never found. Come on, men! Come on! Foot to foot we fought, breast to breast, slipping, sweating on the steamy ground, blood gouting from armour, till finally those who did not fall straight down, overcome with wounds and weariness, started to hobble and crawl away, leaving only two still to fight, the Sheriff and Robin. These two giant men battled on, till in all the gore the Sheriff slipped, and Robin would have cut his head from his shoulders had not the Sheriff's crafty servant Wormley slipped in behind, stabbed Robin in the back before pulling his master swiftly away. Quickly they mounted, rode off, leaving us, the victors, alone upon the field of battle. 
We carried our hero deep into the greenwood, where Maid Marian took him to a special place, amid streams and pools. He lay back as she gently washed his wounds. Listen to all the sounds of the greenwood. Makes me feel stronger already. What's that? What? There. Listen. The toads and frogs singing their spring songs. Mm. In the pond. Hundreds of them. <sighs> crawling all over each other in the mud and ooze. Croaking and moaning. What do you think they're up to? Wouldn't know. Grins all across their chops. Eyes bulging. Certainly look happy. Very. What precisely are you suggesting? Mm. I've just sewn up every one of your wounds. You'll burst them all. This is spring. She's all around us. Shameless as an uncurled fern. Venison, roast boar, a partridge in a custard, snipe and eels and woodcock and pheasant. Magnificent. So much of it. Oh, I'm not finished yet. Uh, there's roast ox, Winchelsea lamb, artichoke and sorrel and leek. Oh, and uh, tipped asparagus, borrowed from my Lord Abbot's kitchen garden. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, sack, small beer and cider from his cellar. Enough, seller. friar. It's only food. Maid Marion, the food the good Lord gives us to fortify our eyesight and bodies and senses, the better to appreciate the glories of his creation. This green moon, the blue fretted heavens above, and most especially, the beauties and graces of our companions all about us. Welcome to the May Day Revel, Robin and Marion. Now springs the spray, the small birds chant all day. We'll rise and gather May, so sing I am for love. Now springs the spray, yet sleep I never may. I'll seek my love this way, in wood and field and grove. Look, Robin, see how every maiden has built her bower. Lined it with yellow archangel, stitch wart, maiden hair, cuckoo flower, and columbine. Soft ferns on the floor, red roses and thyme round the door. How she lures her lover in with sweet talk and soft kisses. And here, ahead of us, between the oak and the holly tree, what I have built. Now springs the spray, if she should come my way, what tongue or pen could say, the joy that would be mine. Soon dies the spray, world's joy it will not stay, God gives and takes away, too soon we all shall die. <laughs> By dawn, the whole forest lay quiet, exhausted from the throes of love. I left Marion's side climbed a great limbed oak tree up, up to the very crown where, on a bough, sat little John looking out over the whole forest as she moved slow in the wind beneath us, back and forth, back and forth, like some mysterious mighty ocean, pregnant with all life, like a goddess, isn't she? Ah, mistress. Something the matter, Robin? Matter? 
Mm, you stare ahead of you with a peculiar, intense look. Yes. What? I mean, what have I done in my life? Actually, achieved. Well, when I look at the immensity of life God created all about us, I feel so... nothing. You've achieved a great deal. Mm. What day is it? Huh? Oh, Sunday. Sunday? Why didn't you tell me? We must go to Mass. Come on! Why this sudden hunger for Mass? To see my Saviour rise in the flesh as the priest holds him up. All through the service, Robin goggled like a child as the priest raised Christ's body. His blood. That's it. Well, the body of Christ. You and I, little John, we're going on a journey. A journey? To Jerusalem, on the great crusade our king has called. What? To see the very place Lord Jesus died, the very place he rose miraculously from the dead, the holy sepulchre. We leave in the morning. Or will you leave the Lady Marion? She'll understand. Richard the Lionheart, King of England, called a crusade to free the Holy Land from the infidel. Gathered knights, archers, grooms, fletchers, cooks, set sail in a mighty armada of boats. Across the Bay of Biscay, along the North African coast, losing many to the Barbary pirates and fierce heats and fevers. Eventually, we sailed up the Hellespont and came to anchor beneath the colossal ramparts of the greatest city on earth. Byzantium. Towers, battlements, stretching to the clouds. The gates open. We pass between their jaws into Byzantium itself. Twelve separate palaces, doors of solid silver. Great gardens, squares, statues of bronze and gold. Three hundred churches, so vast, so filled with colors and mosaics and patterns and pillars, Asia's, vermilions, golds and purples, that as you walked into them, you thought you entered heaven. Extraordinary. Unbelievable. Do people live here, or gods? We goggled a while. Two chaps from Nottingham. Then our armada sailed on to the Christian port of Acre. We stood on holy soil, soil Christ himself had once trod. John, John. I can feel him rising up through my feet, my legs. Jesus Christ. Come along, come along, get ready. Get Where are we going? We're getting ready to march. South, along the old Roman road, keeping to the coast. No more dreaming, Robin. Slouching over the sides of ships and staring into the blue ocean. Now it's marching through dust and sand and thorn. And Saracen. Knights, superbly caparisoned, riding dancing horses hung with sheets of red and green and gold, with jeweled reins and saddles of most delicate wrought leather. Page boys, squires, hoisting panoplies over their masters to keep off the midday sun. Along the Roman road, we foot soldiers marched, covered in dust and sand, blisters on our feet, sharp thorns cutting our flesh. Until of a sudden, up from the very bushes and ditches about us leapt fantastical figures dancing in white and coloured robes, swords and scimitars whirling, sparkling in the sun. Keep with me, John. Guard my belly as I thrust. God, extraordinary. 
What exactly do you mean? How he's invested this amazing world. Every moment with something new, some extraordinary happening. Hold them back! We can't hold them. There are too many. We can always try. When those knights, those damn knights, who were always claiming to be the cream of our army, the flower of chivalry. Then I saw them. A mile off, down alone on the yellow beach by the blue sea. A thousand knights in their gorgeous crimsons and russets and primrose yellows, unaffected by our little war. But as I watched, they changed. Iron armor glinted beneath their fine gowns and splendid silks. And suddenly, the gorgeous fineries fell away, leaving a silver pool welded all together in an engine of raw power. Engorging, slicing, slaughtering steel descended in an avalanche of hatred upon the Saracens, forging through their ranks invincible, carving up whole lines and squadrons and hosts, till all about the enemy fled and screamed and ran, and we pursued. Till night... Then we lay and slept among the dead. The next morning, we marched again. It's different, Christ's land, from ours. <laughs> You've only just noticed that. Dry and dust and harsh. Yeah, and dead. I prefer it. To the greenwood? To the greenwood. We came across a town, fortified, belonging to the enemy. They sent out ambassadors. To show he meant business, Richard cut off their heads and catapulted them back over the walls. Then he catapulted back their bodies, one by one, leaving their widows and families, those who knew them intimately, to work out which belonged with which. They sued for peace. We marched in, took the treasure, the weapons, the food supplies set off inland on the road to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, just to see it. Its golden domes and spires, that is all I crave. I think we'll get to it. Of course. God, I'm thirsty. Here, have some of my water. No, John, I must learn to do with less. Look, all around us, men covered in sores, croaking for water, fighting on through the prison of this flesh, so we might together see the Holy Sepulchre, where Jesus, amid dissolution, corruption, decomposition, his holy flesh knitted together, composed itself once more into life. If one sight is worth seeing, it is that. And suddenly, we saw Jerusalem. Marched over the top of a pass, and there, golden spires and domes and towers, it stood. We marched round and round the world. Some holy man told our commanders we had to. But why are we marching round and round in bare feet? Penance. We are sinners. Sinners with sore feet. We are showing the Lord God we repent of our sins. Then he let us take Jerusalem. <coughs> Four weeks we had encamped outside the city. But with the only waters inside its walls, it was us outside who were besieged. A mouthful of water became so precious, men cut throats for it. Horses and mules and cattle died where they stood. So, this holy man thinks this will enable us to take the city? <coughs> he is a holy man. We are fools. But he was not such a fool. In the blinding heat, the choking dust, 
stumbling on our bare feet thrice about Jerusalem, we worked up such a fury that when it came to the attack, we were animals, bears in a rage. Four mighty siege towers we threw against the walls as rock after rock hammered into them and brought them tumbling down. And of a sudden we were through. In the roads and alleys Christ had walked. Soldiers stumbling, stabbing, hacking, thrusting. Civilians, children, women getting between the sword blades. Screaming crowds moaning into by berserk soldiery. Gouging bodies, severing limbs. And in a few hours it was over. Amid the burning buildings, dead lay everywhere. 300,000 Mohammedans, silent. All the Jews heard it in a synagogue, burnt. And we soldiers, suddenly, seized of an almighty passion, pushed as one towards the Holy Sepulchre, Christ's tomb, crammed beneath its low roof, our torches throwing great lurid shadows across its ceiling, as all king, knight, squire, peasant, shoulder to shoulder, knelt upon the very floor where Christ's flesh had once rotted and then, in mystery, recomposed, re-arisen. We bared our heads, and with one voice, one great, raw emotion, sang out a psalm to his glory. The next morning, on lofty rocks and raised squares, we lay out beneath the blue heavens, while about us, soldiers burnt the bodies of the infidel, disemboweling each to search for jewellery they might have swallowed. The smoke rose high into the blueness while we burned incense and herbs to hide the stench, and drank wine, mellow wine, in its cask many years. Adam and Eve were naked in paradise. Shall we be naked in heaven? I'll miss my mother in heaven. Do you think she'll be there? Will I be able to climb into her arms? Will her dugs give me warm sweet? I'm browsy. <laughs> I think heaven shall be a great running, fighting loving place where you can run and fight and love for eternity. <clears throat> I think eternity is this cup of wine. Oh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Harmony lasted till the blue sky faded to purple, faded to black, and all the heavens became a meadow of stars. Where are those voices coming from? Ah, yeah. oh, that great tower over there. Filled with kings and grandees. Arguing over who will rule Jerusalem, who, which part of the Holy Land. <laughs> but I came to Jerusalem to free it for Christ. Geoffrey wants Jerusalem. And Richard insists on Anka. And Wolfram can't live without Damascus. <laughs> but still leaves Tristram and Eugenio. So off we march into Arabia. I came to the Holy Land to serve Christ. Me too. You came here to steal, which is what we're doing now. Robin? Everything all right? Everything's quite all right, John. Uh, it's just... I'm quite all right, John. We pass from a world we know. Trees, pasture, animals, and cross the Jordan into a world we do not know. Endless burning sand. Hey, look. Uh, over there. Yes. <sighs> Saw the strangest sights. Great caravans of camels. 
line after line of chained African slaves, black against yellow, trudging across the desert from Africa to Asia. John. Robin. In the past... Yeah? I've felt I knew what was right, what was wrong. I felt it in my bones. I knew it. I did it. But now... But now... I... Look at them. Those columns of Saracens out there, stalking us like wolves. <laughs> they sent easy pickings. But each evening, showing each other what perfect gentlemen they were, our princes and theirs met for feastings and merrymakings. One of ours, Geoffrey of Bouillon, an ungentle giant, bet he could slice off a camel's head with one stroke of his sword. So there, in the midst of the desert, he did. <laughs> one of theirs, a noble Sharif, not to be outdone. Bet he could slice off eight slaves' heads simultaneously. They were laid on the sand, one on top of the next, ten deep. And down through their necks he cut. Eight and a half he sliced through. The ninth died. The tenth staggered to his feet, eyes rolling, mouth foaming. No more use as a slave. Dispatched. I need water. My throat's on fire. We all need water. Water. One matter which you can be sure of. Geoffrey, Richard, Tristan, and not given the slightest thought. 15,000 crusaders in the middle of the Arabian desert. No one thought to bring water. Just imagine, Robin. If we could meet in Sherwood again, only this time I'd let you knock me on the head, fall in the water, up to my knees. Shut up. Up to my waist. Shut up. Right up over my lips. Bubble, bubble. Rolling over and over in the great wet waters of Mother River. Any sign of this Arabian kingdom we're meant to find? None. The centre of all these trade routes... The possessor of all this wealth and gold. Oh, Any sign of Jesus, the living God in this desert. None. Uh. <laughs> and Robin Hood, prince of all the Greenwood, just stopped, sat down, and stared ahead of him. We marched no further just sat and waited. Any last strength we had, we saved for the foe. Survival, not the ambition of princes. The Saracens thought us finished. On all the surrounding dunes and hills, they gathered in thousands, the kites and buzzards wheeling in the air above them. A second, which might have been an hour, a day, a week. The mother and father of all battles. For a time, I don't know how long, a furnace of hatred, steaming blood, screaming steel. But as people died, so that hatred died. Could not live any longer in that heat. As more and more died, thousands and thousands. So it became gentler, quieter, calmer. Like a great beast at the end of the day, settling down for sleep. And after it was over, I walked across the battlefield. I saw heads lying far from their bodies, their beauty marred by the birds of prey, limbs mangled and scattered about, crushed skulls, cloven necks, open bellies. No! 
How do I get out of this armor? Where's my damn fool page? In front of me, a knight in full armor, stumbling about, his visor jammed shut. Can't see a damn thing. Some Jeffrey or Piers or Gaspard, some nobleman. I got out my knife. No, Robert, let me dispatch him. Who's there? Who's out there? What is a knight after all? but a worm in an iron cocoon. John. Robin. I'm sorry. I'm so very, very sorry. For what? For bringing you on this whole stupid worthless, shameful thing. Ah, Robin. Let us go home. Pardon? Let us go home to Sherwood, the Greenwood, now. Home? To Sherwood? Now. Oh, yes. And pray it has not changed too much. But it had. The great green wood lay frozen beneath winter ice and snow. A blizzard howled and gripped the land. We struggled back to the hideaway, where Robin had once ruled among his happy outlaws. Broken up. Destroyed. Gaunt skeletons of burnt-out huts amid driving snow. Black trees. In the midst, an old woman huddled over a smoking fire, trying to charm a little food out of a rusty pot. Good woman. Huh? Where are you, one? You're not having any of my food. We don't want any of your food. What do you both want, then? This was once Robin Hood's hideaway, wasn't it? Robin Hood. Don't talk to me of him. Where all his outlaws used to gather in their great fights with the Sheriff of Nottingham. They used to be feasting and dancing. <laughs> Feastings. Lady. Hmm? Why, when you say Robin Hood, do you say it with such dislike? Dislike. Hatred. Disgust. Look at this. Look about it, all this wreckage and, and destruction. He did this. Robin Hood. One day, decided Sherwood Forest, defending poor folk, weren't good enough for him. Swanned off to the Holy Land. <laughs> the Holy Land. Leaving us poor folk to the, the mercies. <laughs> the tender mercies of the Sheriff of Nottingham. My son, Tom. My daughter, Liza. Slaughtered. My neighbours, friends killed. Me husband. <laughs> Prisoner in, in some terrible dungeon in Nottingham Castle. <laughs> Who is your husband? Will. Will? Will Scarlet. Then you must be Alice. I curse that man, Robin Hood. More than any Norman. He betrayed us. Into the hands of our enemies. All this land, you can say, belonged to us. Then Robin Hood went away. The Normans came, stole it from us. Of my parents, they did. Defenceless they were, see. Left defenceless. We end up in this hovel, begging for a living. Duke. Will Scarlet, Alan, Adale, all rounded up, imprisoned in Nottingham Castle. Marion gave up hope. Became a nun in Kirkley's Briary. Robin Hood. If I could get my hands on him. See what I've done? By my own stupidity. Hated by my own people. Robin, you can't be every man's keeper. 
I deserted them. Sit down. I'll light a fire, rust up some food. I got to get Tuck, Will, and the others out of Nottingham Castle. There must be a way. Sir Guy of Gisborne. Lord High Sheriff of Nottingham. You don't come cheap. Assassination. I provide the most efficient service in Europe, this side of the old man of the mountain and all his young Mohammedan boys. Why do you wear a helmet with a visor down? Because I choose to. Even in company? You, Sheriff, pay me to go into Sherwood Forest, kill Robin Hood, who you say is returned from crusades. I have it on excellent authority. It is not up to you to question the way I go about it. Every assassin disguises his identity. A known assassin is a dead assassin. Do you want a guide within Sherwood? Of course not. I have a very special way of summoning my victims. Robbie! Uh, 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 a dream. In the forest. Deep in the forest. I dreamt there was this man in a helmet, his visor down, waiting for me. So? So. I have to go. Where? To meet him. Now, hold on, Robbie. Where do you think... Let go of me, little John. Let go. I know exactly where I'm going. Grim-faced, he stalked down through the winter forest. Trees, black and frozen, locked in frost. All around us, silence. He would not be dissuaded. Robin, turn back. Never. The wood getting denser, closer, until at last we came down to a clearing. The trees so packed about the light could scarcely enter. The greatest oaks I have ever seen. And around and between them, wound round and woven into them, greater, even taller trees. Hollies. Robin, we shouldn't be here. You know what these trees are? Hollies. A holly grows slower than any other tree in creation. A fraction of an inch a year. These hollies outgrow even these vast oaks about them. You realise how old this place is? Older than anything. Older than the roots of this forest. Older than time. We shouldn't be here. Look! Over there. He stands. I saw him. Between an oak and a holly tree. The man in the helmet. Leave me, John. What? Well, this is the time a man sticks by his friend. Go! Little John. Friend. Leave me with this thing. I, by my foolishness, my stupidity, left this forest defenceless in the hands of its enemies. I alone can now put things right. Leave us. And I say this, I've always been your friend, I've shared every danger, your right-hand man. Send me away now, and you shall never see me again. Understand? Yes. Farewell, then. And so I walked across the glade where this creature stood. Good morning. Good morning to you. I must confess, I, I'm lost. Lost? In this forest, lost my way. Perhaps you could help me. Just as I had dreamt him. Faceless. Blank. Yes, I can help you. Thank you. Shall we walk? Yes. I was looking for a man, an outlaw. 
an outlaw. Men call him Robin Hood. I'd rather meet that proud outlaw than find 40 pounds of gold. If you two were to meet, then certainly it would be seen who was the better man. I thought you were showing me the way from the forest. There's only one way to face death. Don't skirt around, mess about. Walk right up, shake him by the hand. I tell you, friend, why don't the two of us, just you and I, indulge in a little contest of skill? Eh? You've got your bow, I've got mine. You never know. The real Robin Hood might turn up. What game do you suggest? See that holly bush on the far side of the clearing? 200 paces off. In the centre, a bright red ball of berries. The first to pierce that. You are a good bowman? <laughs> I'm adequate. <laughs> first shot to you. No, I insist. To you. All right. I turn my back on him. Brace myself. Draw back my bow. A near miss. Now my go. He holds his bow with a strange grace. Ah, oh, good shot. Uh, not quite good enough. A few inches off. I'll lead for the next round. Well done. Right within the green garland, but not quite in the red. Then it is your shot, Sir Stranger. Yes, it is. Again, place your back to him. Feel his eyes. Steel yourself. Ice in your veins. See each individual scarlet berry clearly. Choose the one. Death is not even there. Clean through the center. I doubt if Robin Hood himself could shoot better. What's your name, good fellow? Go on, under the oak trees and holly trees of the ancient green wood. Tell me. You tell me yours. Me? I'm a traveling man. Guy of Gisborne. I'm sworn to kill Robin Hood. I am not a traveling man. My name is Robin Hood. And for you, I don't give a thing. A fight to the death. So be it. He rears above me, sword plummeting down. I hold it off. He drives me back, round and round the grove, till at last he forces me against a massive oak between the great twisted, tortured roots. I stumble as he, quick as thought, darts in, stabs me in my left side, draws back, prepares for his final stroke. Holy Mary, Holy Mother of God, whose love every spring dresses each tree and shrub and bush in green, grant me strength. Now you shall die. And as he stretches up to bring his sword down, the great winding branch of a holly tree catches his arm, and the whole of his great chest lies open to me. Mother Mary, strength! Oh. Yeah. Into it! Drive my sword. The wound slowly smoking. He stands upheld on my arm. I let him fall. Wiped the gore from my arm. Sat down and thought. Will Scarlet. Several of the other outlaws lie in Nottingham Castle. Took off his helmet, pulled him upright by the hair, cut about his face with my knife so not even his closest friends would know him, cut his head off his shoulders. Finally removed his clothes and put them on me, took my clothes of Lincoln Green, put them on his headless body. Then I set off for Nottingham. Guy of Gisborne. Still wearing your helmet. What have you for me? Behold, the head of Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Quick, let me see. 
Robin Hood. At last! Wormley! My lord? Get me a pike and three to hang his body on. We'll display him about the city gates so all Nottingham shall see him. His face is mightily cut about. The fight was bloody. I suppose you want to be paid. Your 400 pounds of gold. 400? A fortune, eh? But worth every penny of it. You don't know how I lusted for this head. Sheriff. Sir Guy. Your gold. I don't want it. What? Let me explain. My trade is death. Yes. That Robin Hood, as he was dying, cursing me, told me how his outlaws, his companions, would come after me once they'd escaped your jail. Escaped from my jail? They'll face the hangman first. Precisely. So let me do the job for you. Instead of paying me that gold, let me kill them for you. That way you end up rich. I end up safe. What an admirable idea. <coughs> These are the men. Will Scarlet, Tuck, Alan and Dale. Yes, Sir Guy. Go now. Leave the door unlocked. Very well. Will. Tuck. Alan. Who are you? Don't you recognise me? I'm Robin. Robin Hood. <laughs> Robin. He <laughs> deserted us years ago. Uh, yeah. Went off to the Holy Land on some damn fool errand. Uh, help me get you out of your chains. <laughs> I've come to rescue you. Oh, my God, it's really you. It's Robin. How did you get here? I'll tell you tonight. Found a blazing fire deep in the forest. Come, look, where's little John? Sulking in the greenwood. Come on. You take that guard on the door, Will. Right, right. I'll take that one on the battlement. Drop him over the edge and quietly. Like a lamb. Right, Tuck. Oh, this is just like old times. <laughs> Where's Will? What's it? Sir. Come on, my outlaws. Strength, courage, it's now or never. Norman Pig! Saxon dog! Every dog has his day. Back through the gates they fought, but just beyond the drawbridge, they were trapped by reinforcements coming for the sheriff. Oh, I'm old. I'm getting too old for this. One's never too old for this. They prepared to take their final stand. Steel hacked on steel, cut through leather, tasted flesh. At last, in desperation, Robin raised his horn to his lips and blew... And blew again. And blew one final time. Out across the Greenwood, over Nottinghamshire, across all England it was heard. And some like me who had quarrelled with Robin swallowed our pride and started to hurry. Others who had forgotten, in a moment remembered, took up their dusty bows. Old men, young men, housewives, monks all came crowding. And while battle raged outside the castle, Robin went hunting for his enemy. So there you are, Sir Sheriff. Have at you, Robin! Yeah. No, Sir Sheriff, have at you! Yeah. The last great oak of England yeah. stood battling against the final rottenness. All my life you have prayed me! Stop you ruling, controlling and destroying! Yes! Good! What else makes you in life worth living, huh? What else is an honest man to do? In your case, very little. Ah! 
And as the body dies, how much longer can its diseases survive? Two giants they stood, each impaled upon the other's sword, till just as I arrived, very slowly, as one, they toppled over. Robin! Robin! Can you hear me? Ah, uh, John. Little John. Oh, Robin. I'm sorry I deserted you. No more of that. How is the sheriff? Dead. Ah, at last. John, you must take me from here to the Priory at Kirklees, where Marion is a man. I hold here my master, Robin Hood. A mighty warrior who no man ever overcame. His grievous wounds need dressing. The prioress herself stood there, as if she'd been expecting us. Then, I recognized her. Marion. John. This is a sad day. Bring him in. I carried him in and laid him down. He will not live. I could have saved him, Marion. No, no man could. Robin is a man of the seasons. He lives. He dies. Like all of us. Where am I? Home. Safe. In the arms of Mother Church. What? Little John brought you here. You fought a great battle with the Sheriff of Nottingham. You released all the outlaws from Nottingham Castle. What am I doing here? In this white room? Where's the Greenwood? He doesn't recognize me. What's happening, John? Tell him, Little John. Tell me. Look me in my face, Robin. <laughs> You're dying. What? In your last battle. In your finest battle. You slew the Sheriff of Nottingham. But he... He gave you a mortal wound. I don't want to die here. In this filthy, white, dead place. Take me out among the flowers. The smells. The green wood. No, he mustn't be moved. Why not? Because you must. Do I know you, white witch? John? Robin? Give me my bow and arrow. Your my bow and arrow. <laughs> Thank you. What are you going to do? Shoot this arrow out of the window. Where it lands, John, bury me. Do you understand? Yes. Rise. Help me up. <laughs> there. Draw it back in the old way. Pull it right back, right back, remember. Till all the world is quiet and calm before you. Yes. Then... He's dead. He's dead. Robin Hood is dead. But his arrow flew up and up, on and on, out over England. With his body on my back, I searched and searched through the greenwood, 
until finally in the last week in February I found it under a great oak and there I buried him Robin Hood I didn't leave a headstone the oak stood there every bough and branch and twig shuttered fast against the Arctic winter all its life its buds, its leaves, each new shoot, locked away within its deepest fastness. Not a speck, not a whisper of life anywhere, except way up, up amongst its highest branches, a wisp, lighter than a feather, a tiny, joyous creature, dancing and leaping out over great gulfs and voids of air. A squirrel, dancing for the spring that would return. In The Legend of Robin Hood by John Fletcher, Robin was John Nettles, Little John, Jerry Hinks, Tuck, Michael Tudor Barnes, and Marion, Carolyn Backhouse. Will Scarlet was Peter Meakin, Alice, Tamsin Gregg, Tom, John Meakin, and Liza, Bethan Ganjavi. The Sheriff was Norman Rodway, Wormley, Jonathan Wyatt, and Guy of Gisborne, Struan Roger. Other parts were played by Richard Mitchley, Pat Quayle, and David Holt. The music was composed and performed by Vic Gammon, and the play was directed at Pebble Mill by Nigel Bryant. <laughs>